this video we're going to discuss graphing quadratic functions in standard form. If you're in Algebra 2 or College Algebra, this should be review from Algebra 1 class. If you're in Algebra 1, this is new material. A standard form of a quadratic function is something that looks like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, or you may see it just as a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember function notation that just says, hey, whatever number I put inside these parentheses, that's what I put in for the x value. So this is just the name of the function. We named this one f, and it gives us our y values. Okay. So some key points about this. The c is always going to be the y-intercept because the y-intercept is found when you put a 0 in for x. So I put a 0 in for x there, a 0 in for x there. Those two terms go away, and I'm left with just c. So the y-intercept is always going to be at 0, comma, c. That's one point that will help us graph these out. Okay? All of our graphs of quadratic functions have a, the same shape, okay? And that shape that I'm drawing up here right now is called a parabola. Okay? That parabola can either open up like this or it can open downwards. Okay, so the way I can tell whether it opens up or opens down is by the sine of A. Okay, if A is greater than zero, it opens up. If A is less than zero, it opens down. Another key point I have on each of my quadratic graphs is this point where either at the very bottom or at the very top of the parabola, and that point is called the vertex. Okay, the vertex of the parabola, for every parabola, we have an imaginary line that goes through the vertex, and that imaginary line is called the line of symmetry. And you should remember from middle school and Algebra 1, if you're doing Algebra 1 right now, the beginning of the year, that the equation for a vertical line on the coordinate plane starts out x equals a number. In this case, it would be x equals 0. So if I'm in standard form, I can come up with the equation of the line of symmetry. And I'm going to abbreviate it LOS. The line of symmetry equation is x equals negative b over 2a. Right now, you just need to take that as a fact. If you ever take calculus, you'll be able to derive where that negative b over 2a comes from. Okay. Um, later on, for some of the quadratic things, you're going to see some parts uh, that will get us closer to where that negative b over 2a comes from. But that is the equation for the line of symmetry. It is also the x-coordinate for the vertex. So if I want the coordinates for, so I've got the y-intercept is there. My vertex, the x-coordinate is at negative b over 2a. Well, if I want the y-coordinate of any function, I take that number that's my x-coordinate and I put it into that function. So the way I'm going to write down what the vertex y-coordinate is, is f of negative b over 2a. Next thing we're going to talk about is how wide are these things, okay? What the a term does is 
if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, then it's going to shoot, um, I'm going to just say it's going to be steeper. Okay, so if this is my generic parabola, if A is bigger than, absolute value of A is bigger than 1, it's going to do something like this. So I'm going to make a mark there, absolute value of A is greater than 1. If the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, then it's going to be wider. That'd be something that looks like this. Zero is less than the absolute value of A, which is less than one. So you can tell a lot about the graph of the, a quadratic function just by looking at what it is in standard form. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to graph the parent function and write down some other key facts besides these that we've already written down. The parent quadratic function just has y equals x squared. Okay. Well, let's identify our a's, our b's, and our c's. Well, a is the number in front of the x squared, so it would be a 1. b is the number in front of the x. Well, I don't have any of x's, so that would be a 0, and c is my last term. Okay, so that's the first key thing I want you to be able to identify, is what is your a, your b, and your c. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I would like you to go about graphing any one that's in standard form. The first thing you always want to do is find the vertex. and line of symmetry. Okay, the line of symmetry is using this equation, x equals negative b over 2a, negative 0 over 2. Okay, so in my, our case, it's x equals negative b over 2a, which is negative 0 over 2 times 1, which is 0. So we're going to draw the line of symmetry, the dotted line. Then we're going to take this 0 and put it back into our original function. So y equals 0 squared, which is 0. So the vertex is at 0, comma, 0. Okay, I know this is simple, but we're just going to go for there. Next thing we want to do is we want to put two points on the right-hand side and two points on the left-hand side to come up with the y values for it. Okay, And what I'm going to show you is because this line of symmetry makes a mirror image of our parabola, if I get the two on the right, I'm automatically going to get the two on the left. Well, the easiest number to the right of zero to put in would be a one. So if I put x is one, y is going to be 1 squared, which is 1. Then I'm going to put another number in there, which would be a 2. If I put a 2 into my equation, 2 squared is 4. And because of symmetry, if I go to negative 1, I'll be at 1. And if I go at negative 2, I will be at 4. I then connect those with a smooth curve. So that would be the graph of y equals x squared. Okay, so I always want you to have five points on a graph of a quadratic function or a graph of a parabola. I always need you to identify the vertex and line of symmetry. If you can come up with um, exact x-intercepts, like we did here, and y-intercepts, try to give me those exactly. 
but that is the generic form there. So let, let's look what happened from my vertex. So if we plot our vertex, I went over 1 and up 1. I went over 1 and up 1 times my A. And then I go over 2 in both directions, and I'm going to put up slash down 4 times A. My A is 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to graph Y equals 2, 2X squared, and you're going to see that my, my point at the 2 is going to be at 8. My point at the 1 is going to be at 2. We're actually going to put the numbers into the equation and do those. But this right here is your quickest shortcut for plotting graphs that are in standard form. Once you know where the vertex is, go over 1, up A. Go over 2, up 4A. Okay? And if A is negative, you'd go over 1, down A. Over 2, down 4 times A. Okay? So I'm going to change the equation. Like I said, we're going to do y equals 2x squared. I will tell you right now, I still have the same vertex because I don't have a B term or a C term. So my vertex is at 0, 0. So I put a 0 in here. 0 squared is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. And I put my two numbers in, my 1 and my 2. I put a 1 in here. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Put a 2 in. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So I went over 1, up 2. Over 2, up 8. Over 1, up 2 over 2, up 8. Connect it with a smooth curve. And that is my graph. Okay, so right now, those are just parent functions. So those are my first two examples. Just wanted to show you the quick and easy way to graph it once you knew where the vertex was. Now I'm going to give you a couple examples where the vertex isn't nice and straightforward like that. And the first example is 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. So erase my original graphs. I'm going to leave that note up here. We'll do the graphs over here. One, two, three, four, So, first thing I want you to identify is the A, B, and C. A is 3, B is negative 6, and C is 4. Okay? I know the y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be at 0, 4. That's just going to be a point that I have, that I know. That will be 1 besides the over 1 up A, over 2 up um, 4A. It may not exactly be one of those, but I'll be close, okay? Next thing I want to do is I want to find the line of symmetry. My line of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a, which is the opposite of b, 6 over 2 times 3, which is 6 over 6, which is 1. So my line of symmetry is the line where x is always equal to 1. OK, 
Okay, there's my line of symmetry. Next thing I want to do is I want to take this x and put it into my original equation to find the y. So if I take an x and my y, I put a 1 in for x. 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Then, from my vertex, I want to go 2 to the right. My next number to the right here is 2. Next number to the right of that would be 3. Okay? Then I'm going to go over 1, up A. So if I go over 1, which is here, then I'm going to go up A. A is 3. So 1 plus 3 is 4. And then when I went over 2, it goes up 4A. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 plus 12 is 13. Over 1, up A. That's 4. Then at 3, I have 13. Notice that 4 matches that 4, which is good. So if I go one more to the left here, I'm also going to be at 13. And that is the graph of y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 4. Next one is going to be the graph of y equals negative 6 x squared minus 4x minus 5. First thing I want to point out, I know this graph is going to open upside down. I know my graph is going to cross the y-intercept at negative 5. Okay, I'm going to do this one in red. I know it's upside down and it crosses at negative 5. Okay. Let's find the line of symmetry. Line of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4 over negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, which is simplified negative 1 third. Ooh, we have a fraction. Let me redraw that because of this. Negative 1. 1, 2, 3. So negative 1 third is my line of symmetry. Now I want to find the x-coordinate of my vertex. That means I need to put the negative one-third in there. So negative 6 times negative one-third squared minus 4 times negative one-third minus 5. Negative 1 squared is 1. 3 squared is 9. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6 over the 9. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4 over the 3 minus the 5. Okay, I now have to have common denominator to add these fractions. So I need to have 9, uh, actually this one simplifies to 2 thirds. So I need to turn this one into thirds. If I multiply top and bottom here by 3, I get 15 thirds, negative 15 thirds. 4 minus 2 is 2, minus 15 is negative 13 thirds. Okay, that would be negative 4 and a third. Negative 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, and a third. There's my third. So there is my vertex. My vertex is at the point negative one third, comma, negative 13 thirds. I also know that it crossed at negative five here. So one third away from my line of symmetry, it's at negative five. That's the second point. And now let's come up with an easy point. I only need one more on each side. My next point to the right here would be a one. I don't want to put any more fractions in because the fractions get messy, but let's put a one into this equation. If you put a one into an equation, you can just get rid of the variables because those are just ones. So I get minus six, minus four, minus five, which is minus 15. Okay. So if I'm at one, which is here, I'm at minus 15, which is down here off my board somewhere. And let's see, there we go. So this is 1. That's a negative 1. I'd be down here at negative 15. So at 1, I'm at negative 15. That also means that if I go 1 away from this mark, that means I also need to go 1 away from this mark. So it's also the same as negative 5 thirds is also at negative 15. So let me show you one away from that mark. So this marks at negative 2 thirds, then go one away, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. Okay. Just because you get fractions, don't freak out about them. Okay. Fractions, the math, the arithmetic in it is not very bad. Um, in the Algebra 2 class, you have the cheater calculator. Um, I'm going to show you in class how to use any one of the calculators to come up with X and Y coordinates to help you. Um, what I do need you to be able to find the line of symmetry and the vertex without a calculator. Okay. On the Smarter Balance Test, you're going to have to graph parabolas. And th they want you to plot the vertex and then one other point. Okay. It's easy. You find the vertex by doing the negative b over 2a, and your one other, other point is you're, you're going to go over 1 and up or down whatever a is. That'll be your second point. Really easy to come up with the graph of a parabola that way. So these key points, um, a, the a point is always going to be the same regardless of what form my quadratic function is in. If A is positive, it's going to open up. If A is negative, it's going to open down. All of my parabolas always have a line of symmetry, and that line of symmetry always goes through the vertex. Okay? My parabolas are always mere images of each other over the line of symmetry. Okay? If your A is bigger in magnitude, it's going to be a steep graph. If your A is between 0 and 1 in magnitude, it's going to be a wider, flatter graph. Okay. Um, practice these. Okay. Um, when the, the assignment that you have is having you graph a whole bunch of these. Get used to graphing them. Put the numbers into the equation. Do the negative B over 2A. Do not forget this. This is like one of the most important things to remember. X equals negative B over 2A. If you remember that, that will at least get you the line of symmetry, and from there, hopefully, it will remind you to find the rest of the stuff.